Hey guys, today I'm going to discuss how we handle our morning time together. And if you have been anywhere in the homeschooling world, you probably have seen something about morning baskets or morning time or power hour, or there's a few different names for it, but basically they all come down to the same thing. A time when all of your family can gather together and work on something collectively, whether it be a subject or a story or um, Bible time or just something like that. And when your kids are close in ages, this tends to be, in my opinion, a little bit easier. But when your kids are spread pretty far apart, like mine are, then it's a little bit more of a challenge to come up with something that will speak to both age levels or multiple age levels. Um, so I have a second grader and a 10th grader. And of course, you know, their maturity, their levels of understanding, stuff like that is vastly different. So I wanted to show you how we kind of get over that hump, how we modify things so that it's applicable to everyone and how we like to start our day. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you what we use for um, our container to hold all of our morning things. I got this rolly cart off of Timu. I think it was about $20. Um, it's, it all like snaps together here. It all snaps together. And then it came with the little legs and the, the wheels and stuff. I will tell you, it is not particularly sturdy. Um, but it does the job. It's kind of keeps everything together. I liked that it had all the individual baskets because my kids like having their own space for stuff. Um, it's not something that we really wheel around the house per se, because it's, uh, it tips over kind of easy when you move it around. So you have to be careful with it. So quality wise, meh. but if you're looking for something affordable that you could just go ahead and start building something together now, this would be something that I would recommend. And that's, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but this is just what we use for our morning time. All right. So the first thing that we try to always include in our morning time is our Bible reading. And I will tell you, I do not schedule our morning time for five days a week. I schedule it for four days a week because I have learned in my time homeschooling that scheduling something for five days a week is basically setting yourself up for failure. Um, things happen. Life happens. People get sick. Um, your mom's house might flood. There might be a car accident. We have co-op, we have field trips, we have stuff like that. And so I have found kind of that sweet spot for us is scheduling this four days a week. If something were to happen and we were to miss a day, then I have that buffer. But also if something were to happen and we were to miss two days, our morning time is not anything that we couldn't double up on and kind of catch up if you wanted to, if you had to. So... I always start by plugging in our Bible study and I, this year I am using, um, Ambleside online. It, they are a free homeschool resource. I believe they're amblesideonline.org. Um, I will put, I'll put their website in the description. Um, but they are a free, um, homeschooling curriculum resource and they go, uh, year by year. And then also within those years, they have a week by week list of the Bible chapters, verses, books, things to read, stuff like that. And they typically do, um, they do uh, an Old Testament and a New Testament kind of simultaneously, things that would go together for the most part. Now, the way I do modify this is they generally recommend... Um, an Old Testament selection and a New Testament selection, and there's one per week. For me, I am trying to work on teaching my kids a daily Bible reading or just to be a little bit more than a once a week type thing. So I modify their lesson plans just a bit, and I make sure that we have 
a Bible reading at least four days a week. And so sometimes that means that I do like maybe week one and week two of what they've recommended. I may double up and do extra weeks all in one week, just depending on how their recommendations go. Um, starting in October, for example, their Old Testament recommendation is for one week is the first three books of Exodus. And then they have a small section in Luke to read. So for that, because it's actual whole books, um, that will just be what we do for the whole week. Monday we'll read the first, um, the first book of Exodus. Tuesday will be the second book. Wednesday will be the third book. And then Thursday we would do that, that section in Luke that they have planned out for that week. So this is something you guys can kind of do on your own and make it your own. I know we have... We've been using Ambleside for a few years as far as some of their book recommendations and following their Bible recommendations, but we in the past have coupled it doing the Bible story on Monday, and then we were using some other devotional type books. These both are really great. This is Indescribable by Louis Giglio, um, and he's done a few others of these, and then this one was gifted to us, and it's um, I Am. And it's basically all the different names of God and what he goes by in the Bible. And so we have kind of done a mixture of things. Last year we did um, the one recommended weekly verse from or weekly Bible thing reading from Ambleside. And then the rest of the week we did devotionals. Um, that was really good, especially when Kevin with being younger for like kindergarten and first grade. And he needed more of those Bible stories, those things that he was familiar with, you know, like Noah and the Ark and Moses and the Red Sea and stuff like that. Now that he's getting a little bit older, this year we have swapped to only doing Ambleside for um, the Ambleside suggestion. So we are only reading just out of the Bible for our Bible time because my kids honestly get devotional type things at church. They get activities at church. Um, a lot of the books that we read are Christian books. And so I feel like they have access to that devotional type stuff. Um, but I want them to start a habit of reading the Bible when they're younger because I did not do that as a kid. And I will tell you, as an adult, that has probably been one of the hardest habits for me to try to pick up because there are parts of the Bible that are boring. I mean, I'm not going to lie. And that's just how I feel about it. And so there are days that I sort of have to make myself get up and, and do my daily Bible reading. And while, yes, okay, I'm glad that I'm doing it, but it really wasn't until my 40s that I was like, oh, I should read the Bible. Like, I want to read the Bible, you know? And so I want my kids to develop that habit in their younger years so that they're not 40 just now learning to read the Bible and pick up the Bible for the first time. So Bible reading for us, that's the main part of it. The next part of our daily, um, our morning time, morning time, I guess I just call it morning time. Um, there's about, like I said, there's about a million different things. And if you search on Pinterest or um, on Instagram, you can look, Pam Barnhill does a whole bunch of great stuff. Sarah McKenzie does a whole bunch of great stuff. There's quite a few homeschool people that like knock it out of the park when it comes to morning time. Um, and they all call it something different. So there's that. Um, this is just what we're doing. But another thing that we try to do every time we do morning time is poetry. And I have my kids re each read a poem and my boys are not really drawn to poetry. <coughs> um, if it's funny, they, they like it. And so I will tell you, Shel Silverstein is probably one of my favorite poets as far as funny things. Um, you know, there's a poet that there's a poem like that has talks about farts in it. And I mean, they just think that's hilarious. And boys are boys no matter what age they are. So this year we are going through a light in the attic and every day that we do morning time each boy just reads a poem 
And a lot of times I'll have Kevin read it twice because the first time he's just reading through it, he's learning the words that are in it. And I'll have him go back through so that he can read it a little faster and kind of get that poem, like that cadence that goes with it and the rhythm and the timing. Um, my oldest usually can just do it the first time. It depends, you know, it depends on what the poem is. So that is the one we do are doing this year. Last year we did... Um, where the sidewalk ends by him. And then the year before that, we did this book, I'm Just No Good at Rhyming and Other Nonsense. And I will tell you, if you have kids that are just not interested in poetry, I really recommend this book. Um, again, I'm not affiliated. This was just a hilarious book for us to start with. We uh, started with, um, or we tried to do some other poems, um, a child's garden of verses, I believe. I think that was an Ambleside recommendation. My kids hated it because it was boring and it was kind of these old timey like Victorian poems. And yes, there's totally a place for that. But for us, it was just not a good introduction to poetry. And so I... We made it through that and then we ditched it and decided that we were going to find funny poems because that's just who we are. Like we're humor people. And if you can make us laugh, then we'll probably stick with it better. So the other thing we try to do each morning is do some sort of, some sort of read aloud. And so this past, the past two months, we have been doing a chapter book that was recommended by Read Aloud Revival, where the mountain meets the moon. And we're almost finished with that. And so for this month, my goal is that we are going to do this Who Was Leonardo da Vinci. I just found this, of course, as we just finished up a month of da Vinci for our artist study. So we're going to read this, even though it's a little bit after. And then once we get through that, we are also going to read the original story of Paul Bunyan. And this is an opportunity for me to do books that... I either, both of my kids I think are going to enjoy. Um, we finished the Penderwicks in July and a little bit into August. Um, the Penderwicks, highly recommend that one. It had us rolling on the floor. It was so funny. But this is a lot of time when I will focus on reading a chapter book with my kids because it's something that I want them both to hear. My oldest isn't necessarily interested in picture books, although he will kind of join in with some of our read aloud time on that. But if it's a chapter book, then we're all sitting at the table and they're usually eating breakfast or finishing up um, or having coffee or tea or whatever we are doing that morning. Um, and so it's a good time I just have both of their attention. On the flip side of that, if you have kiddos that don't necessarily want to stay still for reading, in our cart, I also have um, one activity that they can do to keep their hands busy. And these I switch out, um, I will say, I don't think every month, probably every two to three months, kind of as I notice that they're not really doing them anymore and they're getting bored. So what we started with the beginning of school is I have all of these really great Harry Potter coloring books. We are huge Harry Potter fans. Um, and so these are kind of like the adult coloring books. They're really fancy. And um, so they have the opportunity. I make sure I have color pencils ready for them. And so they have the opportunity to do something instead of just sit there. And it kind of depends. Some mornings they just sit there. Um, other mornings they are antsy and they feel like they need to be doing something. And so they color. So for us, having one activity, and I have found I don't give them a variety of activities. It's basically just this one option. Um, if you have younger kids, you probably are going to need more than one activity. Um, but for us, it's this or it's sit there and listen. And they do fine with that. Probably the next thing I'm going to pull, I will, mm, I'll probably leave this in here for the remainder of October. And then the next activity, I'm probably going to put some clay in or I don't know, I may pull the Lego bucket. I'm not really sure yet. But I try to kind of change up. I won't do another coloring activity um, since we have had one for, you know, an amount of time. 
Um, so that is while I'm reading aloud. And I go ahead and I note both the poetry and then the books that we are reading together in my lesson plans. And so here for me, this just sort of becomes a checklist of did we do it that day? Um, again, if you've seen some of my lesson plan videos, then you know I'm a huge fan of checklists. I'm very ADHD. I've been diagnosed since college. Um, and I need that to keep me straight and also just to know, like, are we progressing and moving forward? So that becomes that. For us, if morning time is going to be cut short or we have an appointment that day, that morning, and we have to pick one thing to do, the Bible is always what we pick. It's a non-negotiable as far as if I can only do one thing. Um, the other stuff I always try to include, but hands down, if I have to pick Bible for us ranks first. The next thing we do in our morning time is we do memory binders. And this is something that is brand new to me this year. I learned about it on Read Aloud Revival. I'm one of, of a premium member. And so Sarah McKenzie talks about using memory binders as a way to help your children memorize things. Of course, I know that sounds self-explanatory. The cool thing about memory binders and what I really like and what my kids really like is that we don't actually ever test on these. We do not, um, I do not ask them to like stand up at the end of a month and recite what they know or whatever. All you do is you put things in here that you want them to learn and they read it every day. And this is a great area for me and an area that I've adapted to be separate but similar for my two boys and kind of keep things on an age appropriate level. So for example, every day that we do memory binders, we have um, either a prayer or a hymn. Um, right now we're working on Amazing Grace. We're doing the Star Spangled Banner. And then um, we have the doxology. And then our family Bible verse is the fruit of the spirit. It's in Galatians. And so every day they go through that together. Then after that, they tend to separate just a little bit. Um, Kevin works on uh, memorizing his address and our phone numbers. He also has a Bible verse for our church program. Every month, the elementary program has a Bible verse that they can memorize and get a little token to get a prize at church for. So we include that in there. And then we also have um, things like there's a poem from this month's RAR Premium recommended book that we work on. And then also he's working on things um, like a poem that talks about um, the days of the month, how many days each month has. I have skip counting in here because we're skip counting by threes. And then also we're learning the difference between fact and opinion. He just reads this. He doesn't ever have to memorize it. It's just something he reads over and over and over again. And then once he gets through that and we have made progress or he can tell me something like when he can skip count by threes, we won't make him keep doing it every single day. I'll move it to the back of the binder and he'll review it probably once a week. The nice thing about this is he gets something that he needs, but we're doing it in a group atmosphere. And so then for Logan, his daily is the same as Kevin's daily because this is something I want them both to do. And so we have Amazing Grace, the Star Singled Banner, um, the Doxology, and the Fruit of the Spirit. Now, where they now separate is right now I have Logan going through common prepositions because in his grammar, he routinely fails his prepositional phrases because he has not kind of memorized those prepositions. And then also he has uh, a scene from Julius Caesar that he is reading and learning because he's going to read Julius Caesar later this year for world literature. Um, and then also, he also does the poem from RAR, even though that is from a picture book. Um, this is a Robert Louis Stevenson poem. It's good just exposure for them. And it's something that they can kind of share 
together. And because their reading levels are so different, what my boys tend to do for Memory Binder, especially when it's something they have together. So for example, Amazing Grace. Logan will read one verse, Kevin reads the next verse, Logan reads the next verse, Kevin reads, they kind of go back and forth. And then the following day, they flip flop and Kevin will go first and then Logan and then Kevin and then Logan. And that has worked out really well for us because for them to read it together doesn't always work. Um, Kevin just reads a little bit slower, of course. And so that has been a way that they can do things together, but still kind of go at their level. The final thing that we do for our morning time is I have Logan read his history lesson to Kevin. The nice thing about the Mystery of Histories is it's actually designed for um, all ages. You can do K through 12 with it. And there are only three lessons a week and they're short. They're usually less than two pages. I think the longest one was like a page and a half, maybe a page and three quarters. They're very short. And so even though Kevin is not doing history every day like Logan is, he's on a loop schedule. So he does it one month and then we alternate with science the following month. He is still hearing these lessons and it's also giving Logan an opportunity to practice his read aloud skills because typically we find with homeschool kids, they don't have that opportunity as much to do like presentations, and read in front of like a class or stuff like that. And so to work on those speaking and listening skills that they would have a little bit more access to, like they would in a classroom, that's how we're working on that. Ge teaching him to read for understanding, um, but also like to slow down, to speak clearly, to enunciate your words, not just to rush through it. So ultimately, our entire morning time takes us somewhere in the neighborhood of about 30 minutes. I try not to make it go much longer than that just because the kids start to lose interest. And honestly, if it takes too long, it's easier for us to skip it um, because I feel like, oh, we have so many other things to do. And Logan will feel that way too. He'll be like, oh, I don't want to do morning time. Can I just start on my math or whatever? Um, and you know, there are days that I let him do that and he can come back and do stuff with me later. But for the most part, if I can keep it under 30 minutes, then the boys feel successful. I love that we've done it. It's a nice way to kind of start our day as we're finishing up breakfast um, and come together and just start together because then after that, the boys really do split into two very different directions. Logan does his thing and is very independent. Kevin does his thing and is not very independent yet, um, but we're working on it. He's, he's improving, um, but it's a nice way for us to come together. One thing I would recommend with morning time, if you've never done anything like this, I would not start out with everything that I just showed you because it's going to be a huge change. And honestly, it gets to be a little much, I think. And when I first started schooling, I wanted to do all the things right now. And I started off trying to do all the things and then we would fail and I would feel like a failure and like, why can't we do it? Or why isn't our school as good as somebody else's? And it took me a minute to realize that doing something like adding in a morning time really is almost like a habit building thing. And we do a little bit at a time. And so for us, the first year for morning time, the only thing we did was read our Bible story and do, or do a devotional. We did, you know, like I said, we did one or the other. Um, that was it, our first year. Um, and then after doing that for a few months, we added in doing a poem um, using the, the Shel Silverstein book or the I'm Just No Good at Rhyming book. Um, that was kind of the next step for us. And so we have worked up to this level of morning time. This is not something that we started right out of the gate. This wasn't even something I felt like I could have done successfully um, like my first year, just because I was getting used to homeschooling and it was such a change for us. Um, so I would say if you have never done this before, 
don't do all of this. That's crazy. And if it doesn't go the way you want it to, you're going to feel like you've messed up. And ultimately you haven't, but you're going to feel that way. So I would pick one or two things that are really important to you and that you'd love to do with your family every day. Is it read aloud time for 10 minutes? Great. Knock it out. Is it Bible? Is it, you know, pick one or two things and then every year or every three months, every six months, whatever, you kind of reassess and decide, can I add more or are we good where we're at? I will be honest with you, our morning time, I cannot see it being any more than what it is right now because it would take us longer, which again would make our family feel like we're falling behind or there's not enough time in the day to finish the other subjects. And especially on days where we either have appointments or on days that I have tutoring or stuff like that, I always like to make sure that we have plenty of time to do school so that we're not like rushing through it. You know, we're, we're working and we're enjoying ourselves because ultimately that's what we want for our kids. We want them to enjoy learning and to be lifelong learners. We don't want it to be that, oh, we checked off the boxes and now we're done and we'll never use that again. We're gonna put that away. So um, our morning time will never be more involved than this. And honestly, as Logan gets older and starts college and stuff like that, um, our morning time might honestly even get shorter because there's a chance he's not even going to really do morning time with us depending on what his class schedule looks like and stuff like that. So this is a very adjustable thing for us. Um, I also would recommend not scheduling it for every day. Like I talked about earlier, having that buffer, that one day buffer, when you're starting out, make it two or three days a week. Don't start it with five days a week, work up to it. And that also for me was able to give me a sense of accomplishment on the days that we did do it and the days that we didn't do it, then I didn't feel like a failure because I feel like in the homeschool world, there are so many great ideas and there are so many cool things that families are doing that we feel inspired to do it all, but we also feel very pressured to do it all. And just like FOMO in, you know, the, the regular world or the business world or whatever, I think a lot of times that translates for homeschool families too, because you know, we want to make sure that we're living up to and we're not failing our kids and we're, did they do enough, you know? And unfortunately, the the negative side of did we do enough is how much can we cram, but we're not enjoying it. And no, you're not going to enjoy every single day of your homeschool. You're not going to enjoy every activity of your homeschool. Um, you're not even going to enjoy... A, a subject perhaps, but at the end of the day, at the end of your kid's life or life in schooling, you know, when they graduate, can you look back and say, I really did like what we did. Um, could we have done more? Probably, but would we have enjoyed it? Definitely not. And that's a lesson that I'm still learning. I still, you know, feel that need to kind of keep up sometimes. But overall, I want for my school and I would love for your school too to be an experience where you feel like we did well and we're good, you know? Um, and so I put stuff out like this to show you what we're doing, but also I always want to give the um, disclaimer, I guess, that this is a process and it's as much a process for me as it has been for my kids of learning what works for our family and not taking on too much, building things. And our school changes every year. It looks a little different because I do change things or I am able to say, okay, we successfully did this this year. Let's add one more thing, you know? So I hope this was, um, helpful or at least gave you some ideas if you have been wanting to start morning time and haven't known how, like where to start or whatever. Again, all of these things, these are personal choice. So any, you can pick and choose from this. You do not have to do the whole thing. I recommend you don't do the whole thing, at least if it's this, if this is your first time. And um, yeah, we'll talk to you soon.